Okay, I missed a couple things up. <laughs> Had to cut the stream off for a minute there. Get back to what we were doing. I was fiddling with some actor template stuff. There's some peculiarities um, since I actually have to save that. In the flight menu, when you enter, as I was talking about it, um, what it does is it loops through everything that is a space object. So <coughs> that includes everything that is a child of the template space object. That would be star, <coughs> star, station, resource, and then all the different planet types. And so that'll go through all of those. But the problem I've run into because I'm taking the names of those templates and <laughs> I'm basically, I have to grab those to get an icon for the different types of objects. So I'm, I'm actually checking specifically to see if their template matches these names when it could just spawn. I actually still have to check the names, but for the comparison branch, I'm checking an object's template this way. I can't check it through its parent to child relationships. Apparently it doesn't let me, because uh, the, the planet that I'm checking is a terrestrial planet template. I don't have that terrestrial or rocky. I would have to add rocky into this list here because what this is bringing or returning is the word rocky when instead it should return, uh, I, I don't know how to find the parent template, but it should return or I should have a way to return that it's a planet. Um, but I don't. So that only works in some cases where if I pick space object here, this loop will actually loop through everything that is a space object. But if you're trying to check specifically the template of an actor, you can't check that it's a space object. Um, I actually might be able to distinguish things because if uh, the problem is I, if I check that it's a space object, I still have to know whether it's a station, a star, or a planet, but I could use two of these comparisons here. So the problem is that they're already being checked to see if they're space objects here, but I, I just want to know. I, I want icons for anything that's not specifically one of these three to automatically default to being a planet icon. So that's why I'm doing all this um, nonsense, or trying to explain all this nonsense, just showing why I would have to link that up. Because anything else that isn't considered just a planet, a station, or a resource. So now it works, there's no errors. Um, this is the new planet. bump into it because I believe it's on a team that I can't interact with. So there's this funky thing in 001 and I'll make sure this is even on. open because I was having issues running that stream. So these planets, um, basically I want them to have no team affiliation and we actually have to go through and make sure that every single version all the way down, which would be the default actors, none base it's not gonna have anything there it is I always forget there's one over there so just to make sure that they're all correct I want the team to be none because there's some peculiarities about 001 include the team alliances affect the collision uh, status or the, the collision ability of object or of, a, of the actors and so if two objects are on the same team or two actors are on the same team let's say 
you know, the player is set to good and the NPC is set to good, they can pass right through each other. Their collision won't affect anything. Um, if the team is set to neutral or bad, and the player is set to good, they will bump into each other and their collisions are considered solid. They can get stuck together. You know, it's useful in some situations where you want something to collide, you know, with an enemy. You want a, a enemy is probably going to be a bad team. And, you know, anything that's neutral is still considered not the same team as the player. So you'll bump into it unless the player is set to neutral as well. So you don't really have a choice in some cases. But I, I turn it off for all of these because I don't want the, the ship shouldn't collide with anything, shouldn't bump into or get stuck on any planets. And that should fix the, the problem that was just popping up there. Don't accept, maybe not. So let's delete that really quick. Might have to make a new one. Make a rocky planet. This team is set to none. And I can't remember if I... That's what I did. I, I've actually turned off solid on a lot of these because the planets, they, they're pretty much never solid. I forgot all about that, but also you have to keep in mind those teams, uh, team associations too because that does affect the collision status and they will bump into each other if they're on the same or on opposite teams. So planets, this is our base actor and the default actor is the one that gets placed on the map. So basically if you turn this off, you have the base actor. You can't really distinguish these two if you don't have that set, but the base actor you can set all of the stuff here. And the problem with that is if you place it on the map you can't change anything about it. So uh, I'll show you what I mean. Um, if I were to just place a planet, you can't change anything about it because the base actor has not been set. So that that's kind of like the parent of these. And you can set all the conditions or all this stuff here. And I would change that here, turn that off. But I want to be able to change actors that are on the map. So that's where this one comes in. It has all the behaviors of the base actor. And the base actor, you can't touch these because they're in the space object template. These are just, you know, the parent template. But the dark theme kind of makes it a little hard to see, but there's there's a line underneath this where these two are darkened. One's darker and one's lighter. And there's a line, uh, you can't access any of these. If you have the light theme on, I think you can see it better, but you can't see it here. Um, There is a benefit to this because you can actually you can set everything in this default actor and this is what will be placed on the map. Uh, for my planet, I don't want it to have any of these. It shouldn't have speed, it shouldn't have uh, acceleration, it doesn't need exits. You don't actually have to turn any of those on or off really, but I do just to make it clear. So I don't want it to be solid or anything. And that will be the default actor that gets placed when you place a planet. Same thing um, with the rocky. It's This is what's going to get placed on the map. I don't want it to be solid. And I, th I think it's because I've got the... Um, it wasn't the parent. Space objects are set to solid by default, I think. No, I turned off solid. Okay, so all of these should actually not be solid anymore, but I could be wrong. It might just be something I have to set myself here. I don't want them to be solid because they're planets and the player should be able to fly over them. <coughs> Even though they're not solid, their collision detection still works. Um, since everything's set to different teams, or no team at all, um, they won't get stuck. And they're not solid, so they'll pass through each other. But their collisions will still detect each other. And what is that? Texture, body, size, where? What is doing that error?
fucked up real quick. So we'll get out of that. It's because this guy here <laughs> does not have a body. <laughs> we will go ahead and make him a rocky planet. So he's got a body. Uh, it's supposed to be this and an atmosphere. What is this doing? Very strange. Well, I'll give it no template for now. Stick a planet body on it. Planet body. It's weird that it wasn't showing up with the template. So there's a lot of settings um, in these templates that sometimes you lose track of. <laughs> Like display shadow is turned on somewhere. Goodness knows where. So I don't I don't want planets to display shadows at all. So you turn that off. Make sure it's off in the base actor if there's any chance of base actor settings being active. And this one also should be disabled. So now we have all of that set under. Let's try and make another planet. Actor templates are super useful. You just you have to get used to a number of different things. Um, I'll call this one Hylos. Just a temporary dum dum name, and it does need some variables here. It doesn't actually need a description yet, but we'll just put. Thick sandy dunes. And we'll give it a 1111 just for that. Doesn't have any hot spots, we don't need hot spots. And of course, the standard variables are all set as they should be. So those are inherited from the, the templates that's all set in the actor templates. So I do like to have it set up so I can make changes and place actors because I, I have to change a lot of these values. But a lot of them are repetitive, and you know every single planet is scannable. Every single object you can click on and all that. So they all have the same behavior. They should just have one parent template that has all that behavior set up already. Now, I don't know. Oh, it's the. I don't have an atmosphere on here either. That's Silly me. Let's make that, that weird brown color again. So weird brown color, atmosphere. Who? And player ship, trigger, actor, proximity, actor, quest, planet, track, and body, zones, two. Which one? That's very weird because it's not firing an error window so I can examine the error. Which normally it does. Normally 001 Game Creator will tell me when there's an error. And there must be something. That's what's going on. Every single planet is missing its body. So that's another interesting thing that if you change stuff like the huh, these allow changes in place actor settings you can actually mess up stuff that's already there on the map but really the fix for that's just resetting my planet graphics and it's not a big deal so we'll give that a light blue atmosphere we'll come back over here to Delinarius that is our ice demo planet and these since these were placed on the map already some of the settings are the same and some got changed when i made some alterations so these probably have their shadows turned on and i also want my fire planet the magma 
the atmosphere is the same medium atmosphere. Give this one kind of an orangey glow. Dalinarius gets kind of a light blue icy. The, might make it the darker blue. And then we've got Jovian. This one is the gas giant. Also got its shadow turned on for some reason. And all of these dumb settings got reset. And that happens sometimes. Um, you can always just delete them, replace the, the actor because the actor templates all have the same stuff. And that's what makes them so convenient. And we'll make this atmosphere slightly darker, uh, like a yellowish. I don't know what color that is, but that's the color that the, the indicator will be. So that's, I think, all the planets that I had on this map, just to make sure we had Helos, this Terran planet, Jovian, Baron, Delinarius, Helios, the star, and our original demo Baron planet. Now, none of the, <laughs> none of the issues we just had should happen. And for some reason I can't click on that guy anymore, but let's see if I can fly into him. Yep. So, Athos over here is solid. He also has no actor template because I accidentally deleted it. We will give him a rocky templates. Make sure that shadow stays off. Everything's set. Now we have two of the same guy, two planets. I think they're mirroring each other, facing opposite Scanning. directions. But this one should have all the settings for the Original. I guess it got its uh, variables cleared out too, so that's no big deal. None of those were really important. Um, we'll give it some climate ratings here. We'll give it a fauna hotspot at 556771, seven, and let's say an anomaly as going to be at 266. Um, 4.15. Alright, so we give it some anomalies. The surface of this planet is covered in sand. There's so much sand. It's almost unbelievable. Is anything other than sand here? I'll just give it some goofy little description like that. And all of these, um, these got duplicated because they're part of the original parent template, so we actually don't need any of these that are black. All these gray ones, if they're gray, they're part of the parent template, and so you can sometimes check to make sure uh, that you don't have duplicates. And the newly placed ones won't have duplicates, but ones that are on the map, sometimes if you change the that one tick mark for editing changes in place actors, you can, you can futz things up a little bit <laughs> Duplicating all of your variables or whatnot. No beers tonight. So we can click on both of these. I haven't set much up in this planet, but we go back over here. Let's turbo it a bit. Entering planetary. The surface of this planet is covered in sand. There's so much sand, it's almost unbelievable that there's anything other than sand here. Whoa. And that's because Another one of my numbers you. must have been incorrect. <laughs> so the first one should always be before this. Now, that's something I've even forgotten myself. The This is the x value, and the x value, the lowest x value, should always be the first 
in that list because it's it's scrolling across checking the X position of each of these hotspots. So this should make it work better. Kind of make this one say 641. And we'll give that one another shot. So that's a, another thing to consider. And the, the way that I normally would get these coordinates is not just by making up random numbers, but I place the icon on the map and check the coordinates Scanning. on the interface themselves. So index too high for a collection contains zero values. I must have forgotten eight. to split my variable. Somehow, yep. Just left an extra, extra semicolon there. <clears throat> so, yeah. Just bear in mind, there's always these. Oh my gosh, that's the, the cursor clicking bug that I still have to fix. I think I had that in my list. Fix cursor tools. Let's say I don't. Fix the issue with clicking on objects before the minimap is initialized. And we'll save that and go back here. Ta -da -da -ta. And Scanning. turbo mode it so that's really good. Entering okay. planetary orbit. Why for that one must be a little bit too high. <laughs> 641. So let's try 4 482. Really I should just do that manually and find those positions, but I'm feeling extra lazy right now. So I'll just make some up. But ultimately that's working. Scanning. Entering planetary orbit. And then it goes on. Anomaly detected. So that was a behavior that wasn't supposed to happen. Normally if the crosshairs are below this midpoint, it's supposed to move up to the top. So I'll have to investigate that one too. Put that in my to-do list. Fix scan line I'm not moving to upper right when icon is below the midpoint of the surface. Okay. So all this stuff is so I can keep track of the, the silly things that uh, I need to fix. Now it looks like I forgot to turn on the clouds for this as well, so we put that to a one. That'll enable the clouds on the on the three D cloud map or the three D map. Come back over here, click on our planet, fly in. Scanning. Scanning. Entering planetary orbit. Oh, my sound got all wonky. Now it should move up anomaly there, detected. but that's okay that it's not. The anomaly allows me to select this button, one allows me to select that button. Everything's still working correctly. I think I have to restart this. My sound was panned all the way to the left for some reason there. I'm uncertain. There we go. <laughs> twin planets. Twin desert. Scanning. Entering planetary orbit. It's unbelievable that there's anything other than sand here. And then we performed a deep scan on the surface. Discoveries. Anomaly detected. Okay, so that all works. That's all wonderful. Um, I think uh, this little guy here. Come on. There's a spot over here. This guy. I want it to be aligned with that. 
It's a little bit funky. Doing it by hand is not the best way. You can actually get the coordinates, the Y coordinates and everything, and copy and paste that over here. That was pretty close. Off by one pixel, and I could even see it there. And so I could move that backwards a little bit. I don't know where it's going to go, or how far back I have to move. This one should be moving forward. Let's just move you to the front because this is insane. And so now that's in the front, I can change the color here. I'm actually going to, I might actually leave it like that for now. Uh, probes 15, so it's a probe count for how many probes you have left to launch into the hot spots down on the surface. Um, set the default to these little dashes. I think I've got almost everything in here set up to show something, but there's also a couple of these that aren't attached to the actors, the, the planets on the map yet. So there, there should be more variables, uh, or at least another variable holding the basic information. Um, I think I can actually, I could store all that in the type uh, variable, where, you know, it's a volcanic planet. But the actor template here, if I have it set up like that, the default type here, um, I don't want to have anything set in the planet parent because it will make every single thing underneath it the same. So I'd have to go into all of these. I would, li I would like the default type for you know each of these to be this, the, the planet that they are supposed to be like, a, what was this one, a volcanic terrestrial. So the, I want the types to be right. So terrestrial planet. And then I could do the same kind of thing with the uh, the rest of those planets, or the, the the same kind of thing that I did with the coordinate system by creating like a little collection inside this variable, separating everything by semicolons. I could store, you know, the gravity. Um, I don't know. 2.8 earth masses for mass or diameter or whatever and then just pull those from this list but what I'd want is it's going to be different for every planet so I can't have all of this in the default um, actor template because I don't, I don't want them all to come out the same like that so what I could do is make it you know just an initialized variable and then you fill in, or I would fill in these three values for each planet. And that would ensure that at least, no matter what, if I forget to, you know, change one of these to a value uh, or a number for my menu, it would actually still it would be holding a zero. And you can do things like if it's a zero, return nothing. So the the, the display field, the field that's supposed to show that number, like I could have each of these. Oops. I can have each of those, you know, just retrieve one of those um, values from that collection. <coughs> but then um, I want it to be different for every planet. So I have to leave it so I can make. Ah, oh, why did I do that? I'm a fool. I clicked no instead of yes and didn't save all the fun stuff I just did. It wasn't much, but I can get it back. We can get it back. And we'll pull this one to the front and we'll change it to all white text. Do -do 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 and oops. No matter what it should be white at all times. There's no status for that one. Static um Template as well. Uh, if you just have it static, you can't change any of these, but it will just be the the default two colors here. So probably want to keep that on static instead. 
yes. So just in case. So if I wanted to, you know, change these values when I land or once I've clicked on one of these planets, I would I would want more a variable somewhere that stores that information. I don't necessarily need I don't even need all four of these, but it's it's clearer for me sometimes to keep certain things separate. But in the case of like arbitrary numbers like the, the ones that aren't going to make a difference really are the size of the planet, the gravity or the orbit distance or whatever. That, those are just smaller additional details that I like to keep in there. <coughs> but since the, the gameplay will be related to these four separate, um, some of the surface stuff will be related to the different protections you have from these types of um, disasters or hazards. Um, definitely going to want these to be readable, some, something that I can see on my end as a human being reading this stuff that like, uh, that's the variable for radiation, that's the variable for climate. And in the case of arbitrary things that are just additional details, like, let me go back here, the mass of the planet, the, the mass of the planet, the diameter, gravity, those aren't really going to take much, they're not going to have any effect on the, on the gameplay, they're just statistics of the planet, so we'll actually do something like that, and with the planet parent here, since we don't want to apply all of that to the stations and the stars, Stars might have their own setup, but we're just working on the planet, so in the base planet actor, I'm going to add another variable for surface. Uh, actually, might make it, uh, yeah, surface statistics. Surface statistics, since it's the planet statistics, and you'll get them when you scan the planet. So we want it to be blank for the parent. And then in all of these base actors, you can actually I'll take that. You know, I might just store it in the object type, but we'll keep that the way it is. So this is in the terrestrial base actor. We've got terrestrial as the object type. And the surface statistics, I don't want to paste that. We'll just make it. Zero, 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 because I only have three at the moment, but I want it to be shaped like that. That's what I want it to, to place on the map. I, I make sure that it's in there. All of that's correct. So let's make sure I go back to the map here. This is a rocky planet, so in order to check that, I'm going to delete this Hylos guy here and just make a new... Oh yeah, I haven't picked graphics for terrestrial yet, so really quickly, I'll make the base actor. This shouldn't have... I'm so irritated by that now. It's supposed to be gone, but it's not. There shouldn't be any attached sprites, but that's something I might have to delete because it's it's turned off everywhere. There it is. No, get out of here. Okay, so now our default there. We, that's still showing up in the base actor. I don't know. That's freaking me out. So I'll go ahead and delete that and we'll make a new one. And we'll call it terrestrial. And its parent will be planet. We want to allow changes in actors. Now, the base actor shouldn't have a glow and neither should the default actor. So I want to pick the terrestrial body here and then we'll just grab this glow and since all of these are probably going to have similar atmospheres we're just going to give it this blue for the default 
for the base. Now all of our default actors should inherit that parent. Uh, but I've got to test it because sometimes I'm wrong about these. It's supposed to be pulling the body information from the parent template. Which it's not. <laughs> so we'll go back over here. The base actor, we'll just set it to template. Base atmosphere to template. And the default actor will give the body. Some of this I'm still learning and figuring out as I go. But I have. I've never made extensive use of the actor templates when they are incredibly convenient and I definitely should have been using them the entire time I've been working with this program, but I didn't because I am a fool. So there's our terrestrial planet. It doesn't have anything set up yet, but it does have our new variable. It has all of this, all the stuff that we want it to have. I'll give it a climate of one, radiation of one, an atmospheric pressure of two, and one tectonics. And we'll say that it has some fauna at 266, 413, just the one hot spot's all we need. It does have clouds. The small, yeah, let's see. There are hills stretching in every direction. The small white furry creatures bounding around the landscape. On closer inspection, it appears they are being chased by even larger fluffy creature. And then the surface statistics, since I don't have those linked yet, and I also haven't set it up so that these all come with that variable preset, Go back in here, make it so that my surface statistics is zero zero zero, and that's just just to ensure that every single one of these that I place has that value in there. I could put it higher up, and since it's I've already made this on the map, I have to add it myself. But if we were to make another one, uh, let's just drop another terrestrial planet in there. You'll see that the values are here because it doesn't change anything on the map. That, that's the, the main hang up. If you allow changes in actor's place on the map, it will update stuff on the map, or it won't update the, the actors on the map if you make changes in there. So still got zero viewers, it looks like. Well, it is pretty late at night. I can't expect people to be watching at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. So, and in the case of all these plants, we do want can scan and can dock. So, I'm gonna delete this, go back into these templates. Our planet template, can scan and can dock, should always be one so that they can always be scanned and always docked at. There's a couple cases where, you know, once we have these templates out there, um, since you can change the, uh, I'm gonna have to delete some of these because they still have that glow. Now, this is me working on the fixing my planet actor templates. So the frozen one I think still has the. Yeah. Right now the only two that I've fixed are the rocky and the terrestrial, and they're not even completely fixed yet. So terrestrial should have the terrestrial body and the terrestrial atmosphere. Everything should have the default uh, statistic stuff. The so planet should have the, where are we? Zero, zero, zero. This is just a temporary value. I might not use this. I'm, I'm going to make an attempt to utilize it really quickly because it's very simple, but everything else should be empty. Everything else default. Um, these are the default planets. 
And then over here, we come into our base actor, we can change this um, the type. Where did it go? Object type to terrestrial. And that means everything that we place using the default actor will have all of those variables. So let's make a new terrestrial planet here. Has its correct everything here. Everything up here is set. There's no settings set. Um, it's proper. It's, um, I don't even know what you call these. The general statistics of being solid or not. And then we find all of the correct variables here. And all we have to do is give it some. Let's say it's radiated terrestrial planet, slightly radiated terrestrial planet, and we'll give it a floral hotspot of. 468, uh, 366. Turn the clouds on. A small group of furry white creatures is running around on lush green hillsides. Maybe to it appears they are being chased by an even larger fluffy creature. And all of these get filled in, except for these two. The rest of these get filled in automatically um, by the game. So we'll take a test. fly off the screen it will have an indicator that matches the color of its atmosphere. Scanning. You can scan it. That's a nice long name because I didn't give it a name. Entering planetary orbit. Plant life detected. And we've got a plant hotspot here. Everything there works. Our template for terrestrial planets, template for you know a rocky planet. We can come over here real quick. Use our thrusters. Scanning. Oh, I can't wait to get the particles working. Entering planetary orbit. <clears throat> There's some sort of issue with particles drawing incorrectly right now that I will figure out eventually. Anomaly detected. So that's the start. Um, we've got these templates set up. What we want to do now, come over here into the orbit menu, and we've got these these three, the mass, diameter, and gravity. So being that I'm not a scientist or a mathematician or any sort of anything, I don't know exactly what the mass is or diameters or gravitational values are. Um, several Gs, two Gs, three Gs, like um, measured in the acceleration of something falling gives us the gravity value. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use arbitrary values temporarily until I can figure out you know, a more reasonably acceptable version. So. I'm going with these formats where I'm using E for Earth Mass, which it should be here. E for Earth Mass and E for Earth Diameter, so it's equal to how many Earths, and then G for how much gravity. And I don't think 28G is a good number. That's probably bad. But what we want to do with this here is we're going to retrieve text from the statistics variable that we just created, that I just made on all the actor planets, planet actors. And what we want to do is not directly retrieve the variable. We want to retrieve an item from a collection because we've created that variable in such a way, or we, we've stored the data inside the variable in a way that we can turn it into a collection. So 
I went over this in one of my earlier videos, but you use this function called split into collection. We'll pull the actor variable <clears throat> that is currently stored, the, the actor that is currently selected. That's the actor that we want, and the actor variable that we want is surface statistics. So that's the zero, semicolon zero, semicolon zero. That's the three zeros, and we want to split that up by semicolon. Now, the nth element in collection is where we pick which one of those three values we want. So let's say I can get rid of this, and I've got my zero, zero, zero. I would like to store the mass followed by the diameter, followed by the gravity rating or whatever. Let's say I just do floating point values there. Decimals, I think they're called floating point. And they're separated by the semicolon. So when I store this inside the surface statistics variable, for the first entry, the mass entry, I want to, I want to get element number one so I want to pull the first number. That's element number one right here. We'll just copy and save that. Then we'll paste that one here. Change that to number two. Then we'll change this one here, gravity value, to number three. Now, that's not all we need here because I want it to show the little letter. And I can put the letter in the variable if I want it, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to put it here using an ampersand, say and E for earth mass. This one will have the same thing, and E for earth masses. And then we'll go ahead and do a G for cheese, gravitational force, whatever. So now whenever we uh, Actually, first thing we got to do is give those numbers to these planets. Back inside our test planet, planets, blah, blah, blah. we're going to want to change these. Let's say it's 1.6 Earth masses, 1.1 Earth diameters, and has 2 Gs. I don't know if these numbers are realistic or not, or if they're, I have no idea, but we'll, we'll just deal with that later. This one will be 2.2 Earth masses, 2.8 Earth diameters, and has, I want to say 3G, I don't know, 3Gs. Maybe it's too heavy for people to land there and it's terrible. All we're looking for is that those values change and update whenever you land or orbit one of these planets. So I'm going to go ahead and scan. Scanning. Scanning. Docking. Entering planetary orbit. And we see 1.6, 1.1, 2G here. We'll go back over to the other planet, Turbo Mode. Scanning. Out of range. Out of range. No, I'm not. I'm right on top of it. Scanning. So we'll dock to this one, orbit. and we have all new values: 2.2, 2.8, 3G. Very nice. There's some wonky behavior in there because I don't really think I want these to appear like a typewriter. I want them instantly there. And that's an interesting effect too. You can change the way that these display when you first show them. You can have them type in like a typewriter. You can have them fade in from black, though it's like transparent to, tra to opaque. But each letter fades in one at a time, or you can have the whole thing fade in in a chunk. So I'm just going to have them instantly show up. The, these ones I'm going to have typewriter in for now. It does look kind of silly, but I'm, I'm working on some other ideas. So we'll save that. Come back here. Now we've got our two, two of these templates. I'll make a new one for volcanic. Volcanic. 
allow changes in the base actor, edit our base actor. It's got everything we want. Base actor can be an object type volcanic. And then our default actor will have all of that set up for it. But we want our default actor to be a volcanic planet. So we'll pick this magma one here, and atmosphere medium here, and we'll give it the orange color of the lava worlds. And that should give us three different types of planets so far. There's a whole bunch, there's a big old list. I think I've there's textures for planets, a wonderful program. Rocky planets, terrestrial planets, gas giants. That'll be a different one because I, I still have to create some of the graphics for the gas giant. I need to create it a. Um, there's an atmosphere layer that I want for some of them. Some of them won't have an atmosphere layer, some of them will. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I want to. Meanwhile. I've got volcanic, terrestrial, rocky. There's several bizarre ones like lush and desert, but we do want a frozen or icy, icy planet. Should be icy or frozen. I'll just I'll figure that out eventually. So we'll come over here. We'll make the, an icy planet. A frozen planet. I'll say frozen planet. And we want changes in our actors. In our base actor, we're going to set the type to frozen. It's going to have all the stuff that we need here. Everything's correct. We do probably want to change surface clouds to one. We could have done that in any of these, I think. Um, volcanic should probably have clouds as well. So we'll change that to a one. Terrestrial planets always have clouds. Turn that to a one. Now we don't always want um, clouds on, on rocky planets because there are barren rocky planets. So we could actually make subcategories of these. So a, a barren planet would be a rocky planet that's barren. You'd have a rocky planet with an atmosphere. Or we could do a terrestrial planet that's barren, or a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere and a terrestrial planet that's been stripped of its atmosphere. But by default, I'll have the terrestrials with clouds turned on. Same thing for frozen planets. We want the clouds turned on for all, well, most frozen planets. And then everything else is set the way we want them. Our default actor, we want to look like a an ice planet, a frozen planet. And we also want to give it this cool light blue atmosphere. We'll come back to our main map over here again. So now I've got a couple other template types. You can test out. I've got my rocky planet, terrestrial, frozen, and volcanic. There's all of our stuff the way we want it. We have all of our stats the way we want them. We'll say this one is 0 0.6, 0 0.7 Earth masses, 1.2 Earth masses, or Earth, I don't know, Earth whatevers. And it's got a normal 1.1 gravity to Earth's gravity. And the description that many asteroid impacts cover not the surface of this world. The extreme heat would make it very difficult to explore the surface. So that's similar to the one I have in my other planet. And this one has a climate rating of four, radiation two, pressure form, tectonics. Probably a tectonics of four or five. <coughs> and we'll give it a mineral hotspot at 595, 382. Well, let's put it at 480. So only one mineral hotspot for now. We'll just say OK. And I've got three test planets. I believe all I need to do is test the ice planet here. I'm not, I haven't given any of them names yet. So it's got all of its variables. It's got a climate of three, radiation of one, pressure of one, tectonics of one. I'll give it another middle hot spot. At five, six, fifteen. 
Let me give them all little descriptions. This one might have 1.3, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 
don't know what's, what's happening. So, <laughs> obviously something is running a thousand billion times. So, for now, I'm going to go back here. Delete my temporary planets. All of these have been sort of reset to their default states, which is not great. But it's not the end of the world. It's it's these were the planets that I was building everything from, as an example, to build my templates off of. So they've all been foobarred, they've had things added to them. There's duplicate variables that I don't need. They also have default values. So whenever you scan and check these planets out, it'll, it'll just show zeros. And so if I left that blank, that would fire an error. So it's I'm just going to leave everything else blank, except for the description, fiery hot. And for some reason, these are all they're all planets because I've never changed their template type, but there's something going on with my templates. The, the colors are not getting updated anymore, which they should be. That's in the parent template. And it's checking each of their indicator ID fields. It, the, it takes their name and matches it to a, an object on the map. And so. It should be looking for Baron Indicator, Delinarius Indicator. We'll just jump back in, pull up our debugger, and take a peek, see what we've got. No viewers after an hour. Gas giant. It's always had a white Scanning. icon. Scan it just to get it out of the way. Entering planetary There's no orbit. description. It has no type. It's it's been defaulted. Right now I've also got this little system going on. You scan the planets to reveal them on the minimap, but you can see where they are. I don't know if I'm sticking with that or not. But none of these are changing to the correct color. The icon should be checking a layer, and I believe what happened is they, they should be checking the layer color, not of the, they're checking the first color of the body, which no longer has a color value. So that's an interesting thing that I forgot to update myself since all the planets are defaulted to white, their icons are white. I could set it to, I, I really need to just change it so it's reading the, the accessory layer, but the, the quick remedy is just to change the planet body color here. That ought to fix my issue. Change the planet body, make this orange one here, and yeah. Now at least our icon should have a color. So everything's set up to read those colors from the body, so it shouldn't be erring. There we go. So we've got our colored navigation icons back. Turbo over here. Not really sure what was going on when everything just started lagging like crazy, but Having put this guy down, they've got shadows, and they're solid. <laughs> After fiddling with all of the settings, it does sometimes mess things up, so I'll have to go through and fix this. I don't want none of these to be checked, none of these to be on or active. They don't really make a difference, it's just... I don't know. I am a stickler. Doot, doot, 
And we don't want any of these guys to be solid either. So originally they were solid when the planet parent template was solid. Now none of them are. No solid check marks here. And then space objects are not solid at all. This also means I probably want to go through and make sure that solid is unticked on all of these templates because we want to be able to fly through them. The star should also not have an attached glow. So we get rid of that. Base actor doesn't have it. Station doesn't have any of that. Definitely shouldn't have any in the default set. Now that we've got all of these guys working, let's scooch things a little bit closer together. Because I keep having to fly all the way across this stupid map. I've got my space station in the middle, my star is exactly in the center of the map. Three planets here. I'll go ahead and put down the terrestrial rocky planet. Not terrestrial. And we want it to be one, 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 one. No hot spots. We'll give this guy clouds a sandy, unpleasant place to take a vacation. And we'll give it a 1.1, 0.9, one. Everything else is as it should be. Doesn't need to have any hot spots. And I've never put so many objects together in the same place. It's checking a lot of things at the same time. Scanning. Scanning. Just to make things a little harder on myself, I'll scooch these out just a bit. So this isn't actually a, a game map, a level in the game or anything. This is just a testing zone, mostly to piece things together and test out all the templates. So once the templates have been completed, I can actually just fill in the details. That I need, and I might update it so it's checking the color of this background instead of the, the body, because the body sprite's not going to make a difference what color that is. Um, so now, let's save that, go back over to the orbit menu, and <coughs> there's something going on with the scan lines, which when I click on the scanning button, there's supposed to be a condition that checks it to see um, if the, the scan line is currently higher than the middle of the frame. So it shouldn't be doing this, but uh, I did run into some issues with this another time when referencing the position of another it's, it's supposed to be moving in position to this frame here, so whenever it's zeroed out, it moves up to this corner. But it's not really... It's not doing what it's supposed to. It's supposed to be checking whether it's higher or lower than this midpoint. And if it's lower, it's supposed to move up. And if it's higher, it moves down. And right now it's doing only down, so I am clueless why it's doing that. That's one of my favorite things, trying to solve these fun little puzzles. Uh, why is it doing what it's doing? What did I do to make it do that? Um, 
It's always little puzzles like that that makes this more like playing a game than actual playing games is. And let's make sure it's moving the horizontal scan line. If it's greater, it should move to the top. And I'm curious why this isn't functioning right, because I've seen it definitely be greater. There's a default animation that moves the scan lines down the screen and then back up again. <coughs> and then there's a animation for moving it if it's higher or lower than the middle, the middle of the screen. But, oh, I've got a viewer. Hello there. Hello and welcome, whoever's tuning in. For all I know, it could be a robot. I got my very first robot. So I'll have to break this down a little bit. Right here is where our scan lines are positioned to the actual location of the hotspots on the map. So it, it, all it's doing is scooting the X and Y positions of the scan lines. And for some reason, it seems to think that it's always higher than the midpoint. In order to determine the midpoint of the, the, the space that I want to move, I, the size of the orbit cam frame has to be added to the position. So if the position is 200 pixels, if the position of that frame is 280 pixels, and the size of that frame on the y-axis is 320 pixels, I just have to add those together. 320 and 280. Of course, my brain doesn't want to do math right now, but that's 600. And you'll get the position of 600. But it also, it's adding it to the size divided by one half. So since my brain isn't working at 3 in the morning, 320 divided by 2, you got 160. So we're going to change that to 160, 280 plus 160. And my non math brain. 280 plus 160, 440. So it's supposed to check whether or not <coughs> that the scan line's current position is greater than or less than 440. And it's set up like this, so no matter where I move the frame or whatever size I change the frame to, it will always follow this rule and keep it constrained to the frame size. It's just some silly little math there. But if I could set it to say 440 and save myself a headache. There's also a chance that it's moving the cam field somewhere. So I'm going to actually make a log here. I want to copy this. We're going to put a log right in the middle. And we're going to have that return. I'll put an and here. And it's going to tell us what the position is that we're checking. So that's going to be the cam frame center value. And then we also want another log to check the position of the scan line. And so that's going to be the orbit scan line on the docking orbit interface. So we want to know where this guy is. And in order to do that, we want to know where it is on the y-axis. So type the letter y here. You can hit include all if you want to make sure everything's in there. But we want to check the y position of the field known as scanline h on the docking orbit interface here. And we'll go ahead and say scanline y. And so that'll tell us in two lines this will tell us the, the, the number where the cam frame currently is plus its size divided by one half. So that will tell us where the center pixel or the center position is. And this will tell us exactly where the scan line is. So we can actually get these two numbers, see if the scan line's number is higher or lower than this one before it goes into this branch here. Because once it hits this branch, that's where this math is taking place and it's sending the path to the left or the right. And it does seem at the moment everything is constantly 
sending it over here to say that it's higher than the center, and that's not right. So we'll see what those log messages say. And the wonderful process of debugging. New. So we want to find, I don't know if I gave any of these planets actual hotspots or not. So I think I did. So we'll go over to this. Oh my gosh, the turbo mode's out of control. Turbo over to Scanning. our terrestrial planet template. Docking. Entering planetary orbit. And I haven't given anything any hotspots. So that's one thing that I need to do really quick. I'll make sure I didn't put any in here. Hotspots. Let's put an anomaly hotspot at 455. 355. We'll just give it one hot spot and I just flip the planet around. I think that's the way I want it. Yep, that's the way I want it to be. It says that I have one viewer. Thank you for popping in if you're a real person. Scanning. Rocky Zero. Alright, so now that we scan it, it should go down, which it always Anomaly does. Detected. And in order to keep that log from going away, I can see that the center is 440, where it's supposed to be. And the scan line is at 256, which means it's going to go and follow that path to the right. And I actually want to add one more, one more log, pair of logs. We're going to take that, put a log right there, and say hmm, higher, moving down. And we'll scooch that over here, and we'll copy paste that. Let's say lower, moving up, <laughs> not moving you. Doesn't matter. Moving up. So if it's greater than than higher, it should take this path and move down. I might actually have these two backwards. Let's go ahead and swap these really quick. Except that's wrong. This is moving back to the top, and this is moving to the bottom. So, let me change my commenting here, move to bottom, move to top, and if it's greater than I want it to move to the bottom, so I'm going to swap out the logs really quick here, and I know it looks a little funky, but moving down should go this way, moving up should go this way. Once it works, we can get rid of all those log messages. spot and it's Anomaly moving detected. up which is the opposite of what we want so we'll just come in here again and the quickest way to remedy that would just be to swap this around less energy. so we'll try that in my mind in most cases I, I don't care what the numbers say as long as the behavior is correct so it Scanning. could be showing me numbers that I, I want Entering planetary orbit. I'm doing the opposite thing, so it should move down. So it did say that the scan line was at 256 and the cam frame center is 448. So that means if this is less than this, it'll move forward and cross the, the center point. And if it's greater than, it'll move up. And the way that I can test that is to come over here into my map not the orbit map, but the space map. We'll pick our rocky planet here, which has a bunch of variables, 
and we'll change the anomalies position so that it's now at 555. So now it's below the midpoint. You we'll see it all the way down here. Now what we should get is the scan line should come in and then go back up to the top instead. But I have to reset. I guess I had to reset the scanner um, variable, which I could have done. This will just be quicker. We'll go in here and we'll just redo that really quick. Space. I'll take Rocky Zero. And we'll change its hotspots position to 5, 15. It's a little bit lower. But now when we scan Scanning. it, dock Entering it, planetary orbit. and scan it, our hotspot should be down here. It shouldn't do Anomaly that. Detected. So <laughs> it shouldn't move to the bottom if the position of the scan line is greater. So I'm going to try resetting that. I'm curious about why it's doing that. Entering planetary orbit. So it stops there. And we see that the cam center is 448. And it says that this scan line is at position 256, which we can actually check over here in our docking orbit menu. The, the scan line horizontal, it's telling me is at 256, when in fact it's at 551. So I'm curious. Why? Why is it doing that? <laughs> At no point does it reset the position and the problem is it's, it's showing me that the scan line that is moving around is at a position that it can't be, because it's already at 288. And as it increases, it, it, it's supposed to check the Y value. The Y value increases as it moves down. So I'm going to investigate whether I accidentally put in some wrong letters here or, or what. So it's checking the horizontal scan line's Y position, which is where it, that's correct. It's also checking where the center of the cam frame is, which is 448. And then it's checking to see if the Y is less than or greater than that size there. And if it's greater than, it should go this way and move upwards, which it actually, I don't think that's what I want it to do. Yes, it is. Yes, if it's greater than, because if it's greater than, it's lower, and then it should move up. And if it's less than, then it's higher, and it should move downwards. And so I'm confused why it's doing this to me. <laughs> I'll take one more look at these log messages just to get an idea. Okay, so it's moving over there and it properly moves down. So it's telling me that this is at 256, which it's not. It's not at 256. So let's see. What I want to do is change that so it's not an anomaly. I want it to be a mineral. Just a basic resource. Scanning. Entering planetary orbit. Minute. Okay. So 
Since it was higher than the midpoint, it's moving down. Scan line is the exact same number that I get no matter where it seems to be. And that's strange because the scan line, the horizontal scan line, is moving up and down. Now, the other line, the scan line V, they're both next to each other and they both have the same coordinate, but neither of them are at 256. So I don't know why I'm getting that that as a position. So that's a, that's a funky thing that I might have to deal with later. But I'll take a peek at this again. So I've got that it moves down whenever it's higher because it seems to always be higher. The problem is this actually loops its way through before it reaches here. So I've got to figure out once it's done moving, it doesn't actually seem to do this correctly. So let me move those inside here. Because this is what moves it to the position. And we want it to actually return that position here, I think. So I'll find out if that helps. But because once this loops over again uh, with multiple hotspots, it might be messing something up. But I'm only using one hotspot, so I'm not sure. If it's greater than, let's just try less than instead of less than or equal to. Not that that makes much of a difference if it keeps showing the same value for the position. It keeps showing me 256 when it can't be at 256. But now you know some of the struggles. I'm working on these projects, working on these games. Working in game engines. There's always weird little funky things that happen. So it's saying it's at 256 again, which it never is. And so I'm uncertain why. The position should be showing me 355. So it's possible that I will need to check a different value because it's not properly giving me the number or the value that I want there. So let's say over here we figured out um, this is where we get the, the collection count value in the very beginning. Um, of entering the interface, there's a collection count that is performed. It sees how many hotspots there are. If there are no hotspots, it doesn't do anything at all. And if there's one, it loops one time. It, it just goes one time. And so what seems to be happening, let's see. What I need to do really is I can pull these coordinates. I have these two values here. And so the very last one that goes through will be stored in field Y. Now, there's a possibility that I have to change one of these to persistent. I don't know if it maintains it outside the loop or what, but it should. So what I want to what I want to check is if field Y, since the third hotspot will be the last, or the last hotspot's the last one checked. So we want to check if field Y is greater or less than so instead of the scan line. So we'll go ahead and check that field Y if it's less than or greater, because that, that seems to be giving us a different value. Instead of 256, I don't know why I keep getting 256. First things first, we'll check the first one. The first one is a hotspot that is higher, so the scan line should move down to the bottom. Minerals detected. So we have our functioning moving down. 
Now, come back over here, we'll change our hotspot. So that it's higher or lower than the midpoint. So in this case, the, the scan line should come down and then move back up again. That's all we wanted to do. We, kind of, we just want to simulate the, the appearance that the scan line is sweeping across. So if it moves to a, a line here, we don't want it to just go back up to the top. We want it to cover the whole map. So if it goes down here, we don't want it to just move down this corner to the bottom. We want it to move back up, sweep across. So it should sweep back up. And that's the behavior that we wanted. That's exactly what we wanted. And the way to make sure that works, I can actually add another mineral, underscore zero. Well, we're going we're gonna to put this one at, say, 605. <clears throat> we'll put this one back at 425, and this one at 550. As long as I'm not overestimating my numbers, that it, it shouldn't be off the map or anything. We'll see it bounce, 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 and it should go up. There we go. So now that detected. behavior is working correctly. Minerals detected. Found two mineral hotspots. You deploy your probe at that point. the condition of everything. Every time you land on a planet that you've already surface scanned, it'll keep the positions of all the hotspots. And I don't know if I put hotspots in any of the other planets. Likely didn't. I don't think I did. None in Terran. can't resize these windows or I would. And I'm there and there's, I, I, I don't remember if I put one on Baron. Don't believe I did. Nope. So there's not much more to that. Um, I've restored my colored Atmosphere icons. I've got my Entering planetary orbit. mass diameter gravity stats being pulled from a collection. So let's go ahead and add that. Fixed mass diameter gravity stats. I think there's also supposed to be an orbit stat. I was going to include an orbit stat, so I might also add that the distance it is from the star that is orbiting. We've just fixed the scan line, not moving. I'm not really certain how to deal with this particular issue. Fixing the scan line and moving across the screen too fast. There's some... It's likely I have to do some kind of logarithmic adjustment that scales the movement, but I, I don't know how to do that quite yet. Clicking on objects before the minimap is initialized. There's one case in here. Mouse touch down, I want to say it is already has a check for interface menu, but we also want to check to make sure that the minimap interface is turned on already, because the minimap is checking icons. Ah, so let's go ahead and do that. There we go. We want it to follow the chain if minimap overlay is on, continue. Ultimately, this should fix the issue. If I click on an object, it might be at the highlight button, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I want to click quickly right in the middle, make sure that nothing happens. Okay, so 
so that fixed the issue that was happening whenever the minimap was not on. I might move that somewhere else. Um, there's probably a better way to ensure that everything's double checking to make sure the plants are spawn, everything's on. Um, Activating a stage button with cursor stuff, and I want to cause but that's a hard one. I'm gonna have to sit on that one, I believe. Now, surface button is not clearing the hover tool tip. Kind of knocked out in the broken stream I did earlier. I don't know if I managed to save what was happening uh, visually, or if it was just me talking to a black screen, but I had some issues earlier. Accidentally hit a hotkey and switched myself out of streaming, so. We're just going to pretend that didn't happen and go along with this new list. So I've sort of fixed the templates for planets, so I'm going to give it a half an X or a slash. And then fixing the credits display to properly display player money. That's going to be another one. Um, over in the docking station menu, we've got this little guy in the corner. Currently currently using some spaces because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It should be, I think, a 10, 10 digit money. 10 digits of money. <laughs> and I do have to set it up so that it'll add a dollar sign to the beginning of a formatted 10 digit number. But I don't want it to squish them together. Like, oh, the way that it's showing them in game if I just retrieve the, the current money being held by the player, it gets squished together like this, does this silly thing. What I could also do is split it up into two separate fields. So I have you know my dollar sign on one side. <coughs> Ooh. And my money on the other side. 50812. And scoot it there. So that's one way I could do it. And this is formatting it um, to have decimal points. <coughs> I do kind of like the decimals, but I also don't plan to have uh, sense, sense in the game. There's no don't rounding of sense. So that, without formatting it, gives you this wacky number with a whole bunch of zeros. And what you can do is you can round it to the nearest hole and have zero decimal places and that would be main dot money. And now it's not gonna work <laughs> because everything is terrible. So, I just want to make sure that that rounding is working. It works in several other places. I've used it a million times, so. Have I used player money a million Don't times? You. I sure have not. Now what I think is happening is it's spawning two sets of money. So, that was my mistake. I spaced out on the Dumbo sometimes. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. We should easily just have the boring 1000 there. So that's one way I could do it. I like to overcomplicate things sometimes and count the number of digits and then append the dollar sign to the end of that. But for now, I can, I can kind of say that's halfway done because it's not super important that it works any more complicated than it looks. So there's the only reason I would like to do it is to cut down on the number of fields that are on the screen. So I could have one field instead of a just a floating dollar sign. It's not incredibly important. Uh, so we'll just we'll call that half done for now, and just pretend that it's more complex right now. So. Adding planet descriptions to the planets. I, I've done basic descriptions. Each of these little guys has sort of a. It's fiery. It's covered in icy glacial crevices. Um, creatures are eating each other. I'm just, you know, 
little silly descriptions. I don't remember what this one was. Sandy, unpleasant place to take a vacation. There, there are definitely going to be more detailed descriptions of planets and stuff in the game. Um, it is just fun to show how all this is put together and how we get it all working. So we'll go back over the docking orbit menu. I the only things that I haven't connected to <coughs> the scanning system are these three minerals, flora, and fauna. And it's going to be based on the count that is returned for each type. And this is basically a big complicated web right now that I'll try and explain. Um, it's returning a collection that's being built as you scan called the orbit log. And the orbit log, that that is built by the scan operation. When you, when you activate the scan button, we'll just dive in there. Some of this is interesting too. So it looks more complicated than it is. When the interface is first opened, originally there's a an entry called null. It's just called null. It doesn't have to be called anything. It's just checking for a word null somewhere else. And you can use any word you want. You could use zeros. You could use just a space, whatever. Space counts as a character. So you just check to see if there's a space there. Uh, it, it's not important, but um, basically the first thing I want to do when I'm building my, my log collection is I, I clear out that value first. And during the scan, um, back up here, whenever it's moving the scan line across the screen, there's a little series of variables here. It adds a one. Each time it finds a flora, it adds one. Each time it finds a mineral hotspot, it adds one. So you end up with a, a, a total count at the end of, you know, three anomalies, one flora, four minerals, two minerals, one mineral, whatever. Over here in the log is where those things get prioritized in the log. So the first thing it checks for are anomalies. If there's any anomalies found, if anomaly found is not equal to zero, you, I like to use condition branches a lot more than comparison branches. You can use comparisons. Um, it's basically the same thing. You would just be checking if it's not equal to zero in this extra menu rather than I type it out inside the condition anomaly found not equal to zero is the same thing as using a comparison branch all it's doing is it's going to take the left or right if this is not zero it'll go left and if it is it'll go to the right so if there has been anything found already it's going to add the word anomalies uh, otherwise, if there's only one, it'll say anomaly found. So that that's uh, some grammar stuff. If the word is a certain type of word, ends in a Y, you know, or has an IES for plural, you might have to do some separation like this. Like if there's only one, it should only say anomaly, and if there's more than one, it should say multiple anomalies. <coughs> Second priority is the life form hotspots. Checks to see if there's any life forms. Adds that to the log. If there's any plant life if there's any minerals. And if there are less than three entries in that log, it will add scan complete to the end. Otherwise, if there's nothing at all, it just says the scan is complete. But over here, where it adds scan complete, it basically takes the value that's already in the orbit log variable, this one right here, and it adds this, you'll see this semicolon. You've seen me use these a couple times to split collections. So this, basically it's adding a third entry, a third collection entry. Anything else that you'd want to add to the end of that, or you know, you'd use another semicolon and space it out. And this would be entry four or five, whatever. So that's how that log is getting built. And so what I can do is check that um, what I really want to do is check that log in order to get these three numbers and it'll base it on however many 
of each have been found. So if you know it found two minerals instead of one, if it only finds one mineral, then it's poor. If it finds two, it's moderate, and if it finds three, it's rich. So it, it's I'm gonna probably come up with more categories for that. But when it finds zero, it's uh, I can't remember what I was gonna set the non. Uh, might be zero to one is poor. <laughs> Because the results should it should be based on the total amount of hotspots that are found, and so the way that these will check that is to check the interface collection, and each one is going to check a different entry of that collection. So I'll show you how that works really quickly by creating several hotspots. We'll give this planet, you know, it's got a mineral hotspot, mineral hotspot. Then we'll give it a flora hotspot at say 305, 325. Hopefully I'm getting all these correctly on the screen. So what it does whenever you scan the surface. Scan. Fast forwarding. Entering Yikes. planetary orbit. I just went right past that one. Oh, that's because <laughs> I need to get better at that. So I'm gonna make a little list here. The I have to always keep in mind that the only way to position them is the lowest X has to be the first entry. So I'm going to take my little icon here and I'm just going to paste it in a couple spots. So we'll take this position here, 282, 330, and we're just going to stick it in here, 282, 330. And then we'll drag it a little bit this way. 426482 will be the next coordinate. 426482. Scoot one here. That will be at, oops, 530378. And we'll go ahead and put the last one over here. Yeah. So there's four. So that one's at seven seven eight four nine eight. Seven seven eight four nine eight. Seven seven eight four nine eight. Okay, so now we can just delete this guy. Don't save that. Go back to our map and we'll come back into our rocky planet. And we'll start out by putting that mineral at two eight two three three zero. And our second mineral. We'll change that to our second coordinate, 426484, I'll change the flora to 530. So that should be three hotspots so far. Okay. And we'll add one more mineral. Seven, seven, eight, four, nine, eight. Okay, so we've got these four. Just want to make sure it scans them right. They all show up correctly. These three are minerals, and it did discover life. Plant life is more prioritized than minerals, so it will announce the plant life. Now, as we have these three and one fauna, or one plant life, I want to check 
is in the interface for the docking orbit. Oops. We do have a log here that gets built. Found one flora hotspot, found three mineral hotspots. Scan complete. So when I'm building the log, I can also build a second, uh, another second collection that just keeps these numbers separate. So that's mostly what I want to do is to keep these numbers separate or I can actually I can have it store them in their own variables and just have these check to see whether those variables are high or not so that might be a nice quick and easy way to do this where I'm not complicating things too much except I don't like to use too many interface variables like that um, So, I could actually have the scan check. Um, let's see, I'm just thinking of different ways to do this. It, you can always come up with multiple methods for these um, things. Sometimes there's more than one way to do stuff. Sometimes there's shorter ways, longer ways, more complicated ways. But there's always more than one way. So. When this is building the log down here, this is where we're getting the numbers. Uh, the If it's greater than one, it tells us that we have anomaly and all that. Where life forms found, this all this is doing is checking and seeing how many fauna were found by adding the fauna found variable. So fauna found greater than zero. So what we can also do here, if fauna found is greater than zero, we want it to tell us how many, but we also want to check to see how much fauna was found. So we can add in each of these, minerals, plant life, and fauna. While it's building the log, we can actually have it change those variables or values on the interface to reflect each of these. So that might be easier than me just storing the values, passing them over. Or more fun. I don't know if it's easier, but it might be more fun than just storing the values in an interface variable. But you know what? Let's see. I might actually try the interface variable method first because that would require several conditional branches. Now, we'll actually say, what are these going to be called? Uh, it's a fauna, yield, flora, yield, and mineral, yield. So we'll say fauna, yield, your flora, and mineral. And these will all start at zero for now. <coughs> And they'll refresh when you enter the menu. But actually, I don't want those to be on this menu. I want those to be on the docking orbit menu, I'm pretty sure. Orbit minerals, orbit flora, orbit fauna. And we'll actually start those out as scan. Because we can actually just change these to check the text that's stored in each of those. So we want to check the interface variable of docking orbit. That's called orbit minerals. We can copy and paste that to orbit flora. And we'll change this one to orbit fauna. Fauna. Orbit fauna. So I've got one whole viewer tuning in. Thanks for hanging out if that's what you're doing. Right now, those should all just say scan when the interface is opened. And we'll add some behavior to that here in a second. So I like to check almost every scan. little change just in case, because you watch me break stuff earlier. So they all say scan as they should. Form the deep scan. 
Plant life detected. Updates. They all still say scan. So what we want to do here is in our scan button, the deep scan button, back in our log builder, if there were life forms found, we want it to change the variable, the interface variable of the docking orbit. If it found fauna, we want to set it to fauna found. I'll copy that, put it over here. If any flora was found, we want to change that to flora found. And we'll put another one over here. If any minerals were found, mineral found. Now, these are going to store all of our numbers in those variables. And if nothing was found, we want it to set everything to zero. So if there was no fauna found, it's going to make that a zero. If there was no flora found, it's going to make that a zero. And if there were no minerals found, it'll make that a zero. And that's going to store all of these important values that we want to check here somewhere else. So it'll store the number of everything in each of those variables. So back here on the orbit menu, I'm going to be able to copy and paste most of this, I believe. So it's going to try and retrieve what's being stored in orbit minerals. So what we want to do is make this a script. And we're going to make it say, if the interface variable <coughs> for orbit minerals is currently equal to scan, we want it to return scan. So we actually want it to return the interface variable. This is just one way to do this. There's there's probably several different other ways to do this. If it's not equal to scan, it will be changed to a number. We just want to check to see what that number is. So you can use a comparison branch or condition branch, it doesn't matter. Comparison branch, if that number is less than or equal to one, we're going to return the value Four. <coughs> now, if it's less than or equal to two, I'll we'll call it moderate. And if it's less than or equal to three, I'll call it rich. Now this might not be the only way that I'm going to determine these values. I might also have an arbitrary value based on the type of planet that returns um, some kind of addition to these numbers. So you know, it might be a resourceful planet in the, the hot, there might be two hot spots, but you get a bunch of resources from those two hot spots. We'll find out, I'll, I'll get to that eventually. So this is basically, if it's greater than or equal to three at any point, it'll just be rich. So that's gonna be for minerals. We're gonna copy that. Bring the next one in. This one's for orbit flora. 
So we want to just change this to orbit flora. And we're going to change this one here to orbit flora. And it should do the same thing. And now we'll do the fauna. Ta -ta -ta. So I'll change that to orbit fauna. And change that one to orbit fauna. So now this one should tell us when we scan the planet, there's one flora and three minerals. It should say poor fauna, rich in minerals. I think it'll actually say that it's poor in flora too because we set it to one. So I might make it so zero is equal to devoid. Scanning. Entering planetary orbit. So now when we scan the planet, it should update all of those fields. Plant life detected. So it found three mineral hotspots, but it's still showing up as poor here. So I want to take a look at my interface. See what my docking orbit is storing here. So it's it's showing that I have three minerals, three orbit minerals, one orbit flora, and zero fauna. So it's storing everything correctly. But for some reason these aren't correctly giving me the result that I want. So it's because I haven't set my expression. So that, that's a silly mistake on my part. <laughs> What we want to do is check to see if that value of the interface variable not if zero is less than two. I totally missed that. And then we'll come back through and do it to each of these because can't believe I did that. So this is the fauna. Oh, this is flora. And this one. Flora. Now we come back through here, change those to fauna. And okay, so now when we scan the planet, these should reflect the weighting of the 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 amount. Scanning. Fast forwarding. Entering planetary orbit. All right. Rich, poor, poor. So we only have one plant there. If we had two, it could be moderate. So we can actually let's put another flora hotspot in there, and we'll make that with the ping icon. Copy that. We'll put him up here in the corner. So that'll be 816, 320. 816, 320. We'll save that just because. No. 816, 320. So we want one more. And one more hot spot to the planet. So now we've. Ugh, I hate when I do that. So now we'll come back over here, try that again. spots now. Do. 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 Plant life detected. 
rich, moderate, and poor. So we've got two floras, three minerals, and each one will be interactable, harvestable, once I implement the deploy system, which is still not quite here yet. I'm at two hours. Two hours and one viewer. Well, I hope you're entertained or interested. This is not the most progress, but it's definitely small, small steps that'll make everything easier. We've got all of our icons working, all of our, our basic planet templates are running correctly. Uh, stations, I gotta set up station templates. All these little floaty icons. Turbo mode. The one big issue I have right now is the particles. There should be rocket trails coming out of my ship, but there are Scanning. none. You'll just have to ignore that in the meantime. I'm Entering not sure what's orbit. going on. Some kind of rendering issue or seems to be anything attached to the player sprite does not seem to work right so I'm, I'm trying to figure that out still but uh there's only a couple things left that i could do tonight parallax layers maybe I do have this weird, I don't know if it's still doing it, but it's somewhere in one of my actor scripts, I'm storing a variable that I don't need. Not, not required to use this thruster variable. I also don't think I need my key press variables anymore, but I've changed a lot of my controls and stuff in the last week or so. And this is interesting. Um, not shown this off. It's definitely weird and not perfect, but I've only got this up button stored here to store things, store old scripts. This doesn't necessarily do anything. Same thing, you'll notice here there's only a weapon button and then up and down. Weapon buttons and up and down. And there are no forward thrusts, there's no left and right controls. That's because they're all currently, not that one, they're all held inside one single script. Every bit of movement for the ship is stored here. So there's actually a few checks to make sure that you're not turning, or if you are turning, to apply drag variables, um, acceleration, when to stop. Um, then if you're holding the up button, it actually continues to thrust. There's, there's boosting controls and that determines if you're holding down the boost button. That change, there's pose changes for each action. Um, and all of these smaller, um, I won't say these are loops, but since this is in a wild timer, it just it runs it over and over and over. So it, it makes all the adjustments for turning, it makes all the adjustments for backgrounds and parallaxes showing up and speeds of um, pretty much everything. The energy recharge rate, all of it's stored in one script. So that's a... Uh, for me, that's super convenient and the first time I've ever done that. So that at least might be the end of my night tonight. I've got, got a decent amount of this stuff done. Um, sorry about the original stream getting kind of messed up, but there's about an hour of good stuff in there before it gets blacked out for a bit. Um, a few things on it, the infinite map or never ending map. Tomorrow or even tonight, probably tonight, I'll get into some of the coordinate stuff, um, how I set up coordinates to work from the center of the map. I want to get through examining some of the features that I've implemented so far. Uh, all I've been doing is breaking down interfaces, and I do want to show more than just interfaces at some point, but that's really what I'm working on at the moment. But I can, I would like to go into some of the other stuff that I've put together. There's some um, collision stuff to make things bounce off each other. I've got um, a number of mathematical 
use values I've implemented, and I'll probably distribute those online somewhere for anyone who uses 001 Game Creator. But um, until then, I'm going to jump off for now. Thank you for popping in. Uh, maybe tonight I'll be able to keep a consistent stream for a few hours and just go head on, work on the project. But it's probably going to be earlier in the evening rather than at midnight, which I know is not the greatest time for people to jump on. Um, but since I work overnight at the hotel, it's really my best option. So if you haven't yet, check out ScreamingBrainStudios.com. The my main website is just full of free stuff, free free software tools that you can download, free tutorials, free free everything. There's all kinds of free graphics. Um, I'll probably mention this every time, but it's all free, 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 free textures you can use for 3D models, low poly stuff, PlayStation One graphics. There are specialized textures like circles for roofs, abstract stuff for you know game backgrounds, designs, patterns. I got all kinds of buttons. There's frames for character portraits, and then you get into the tile sets. There's hexagonal tiles, game pieces, you know, animated flags, pretty much all kinds of random stuff here and then tutorials that cover a lot of old school graphic styles but if you uh do subscribe to my patreon it's, it's only one dollar uh there's just some you know behind the scenes stuff sneak peeks um you'll get your name added to the front page of the website and there's a couple packs uh, exclusive packs for patrons only that just they're full of a whole bunch more random free stuff so thank you guys for checking it out and um all one of you. <laughs> I'll see you guys tonight.